the Spaniards basically carved out central Mexico, which was really more or less in line with the Aztec dominion, like what the Aztecs controlled. And so they called that the kingdom of Mexico, el reino de Mexico. Okay, so the word Mexico has very deep roots in Mexican history. One, because the island where the Aztecs lived, where the Mexica lived, that was called Mexico or Mexico. And then even like during the colonial period, central Mexico was referred to as El Reino de Mexico. Now, who was the king of the kingdom of Mexico during the colonial period? Well, the king was the king of Spain or the king of Castilla. Okay, so this was like an actual like legal jurisdiction. And so if you were from central Mexico, you were a Mexicano. Now, first, the word Mexicano referred to indigenous people from the island of Mexico. So if you were a Mexica, more specifically, if you were like um, from Tenochtitlan or Tlatelolco, those two cities, those, those, there were only two cities on the island. And if you were from Tlatelolco or Tenochtitlan, you were, you were a Mexicano. Then the definition of the word Mexicano expanded, okay? I mean, it evolved, okay? So like these definitions evolve. So by 1565, if you lived in the El Reino de Mexico, if you were born there, okay? Not just if you were a Mexica or if you were a Nahuatl speaker. Really, if you were from Central Mexico, El Reino de Mexico, you were a Mexicano, and there's evidence that, 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 that right around 1565, the conquest of the Philippines, that's right around the time where the word started being applied to everybody. Because when the Spaniards wrote down reports and they talked about the conquest of the Philippines and the, or the discovery of the route to the Philippines, they described it as the conquest by the Mexicanos. It was discovered by the Mexicanos. Because remember, like in order to sail to the Philippines... You have to, I mean, you have to discover because there, you have to look at the wind, the directions, the currents, like there, there's a lot involved in sailing across the ocean, right? So you have to discover routes in the ocean that are, that are favorable to sailing. Okay. And so it was people from Mexico that discovered the route from North America or from the Americas to the Philippines. That it's also because that's around the time where like there's already like a generation of criollos being born in Mexico. Okay. So it wasn't necessarily like an ethnic term. It was for if you were, if you were a, like of Mexica origin, because remember the, the island was still there. Okay. Like there were like Tenochtitlan was still there. Like Tlatelolco was still there. Th there were still people from that island there. Like though that's like the original sort of ethnicized term of the word Mexicano. But once you get to 1565, it's sort of like a quasi-nationality, even in that time, okay? Because if you were from Castilla, if you were born in Castilla, which is a region of Spain, you were considered to be a Castellano. And if you were born in like the Basque region of Spain, you were a Vasco, okay? So they had words to, to refer to people based on where they were from in the Spanish Empire. So if you were somebody born in central Mexico, you were from El Reino de Mexico, which was an actual legal jurisdiction in the Spanish empire. And if you were born there, uh, at beginning around 1565 and going forward, you were a Mexicano. That's where like it went beyond just being Mexica. And so we have to consider these things. Okay. You have to consider these things in Mexican history because, you know, we are the product of all that stuff. Okay. Like, I mean, I know we romanticize, Tenochtitlan and like the, the you know, pre-Hispanic times. But, you know, we all like we had this long journey to get here. And so, you know, if if you were if you lived in those times, I mean, all of our ancestors, I mean, if we're Mexican, right, we are we're all like if your family's from Mexico and you have colonial era or before colonial era ancestry, like let's say you're, you have Spanish ancestry, but also like indigenous ancestry. Every we all went through this journey together. And maybe everybody's experience was different, but it, this is a hi historical journey that we were on. And how did we all become me Mexicanos? Because the word started off for people on that island. How did we get that name? Like my family's from Michoacan. How did we become Mexicanos? Okay. Because not all of us were from that island. 
So we have to look at this journey through history on how we became Mexicanos, okay? Colonial era cities, some of them had coats of arms, like these symbols for the city, you know, kind of like how your last name, you might have like a Garcia coat of arms. Okay, well, cities have coats of arms. And so the coat of arms of Mexico City was an eagle on a cactus, okay? In the colonial period, okay? That's not something that, and the story was there. People knew the story. People studied the stuff. Like they knew that the, the eagle on the cactus symbolized the foundation of Mexico City by the Aztecs, by the Mexica, and their journey from Aslan. Like people knew those stories back then, okay? So this is not something we brought back after independence. Like, oh, we got our independence in, in 1821, and all of a sudden we're going to start using the eagle on the cactus again. Like that's not what happened, okay? Okay. We like they started using these symbols in the colonial period. So even Spaniards were using Spaniards, Criollos, uh, mixed race people, indigenous people. We have this very like long journey of how we all became Mexicanos, really. And it, it, it's not a straight line, you know. That symbol of the eagle on the cactus is a, it's a very fascinating history of it. You know, even like Criollos and Mestizos, because, you know, they were they were soldiers for the Spanish Empire. They actually used that as their banner. You know, like if you imagine like old school, you know, times of war where like they go in with their flag or their banners and stuff like that. Well, people from El Reino de Mexico, like their their um, squadrons, like their units when they went to war, they would carry the eagle on the cactus. And nobody ever talks about that. In the conquest of Florida, because remember, you know, the Spaniards conquered Florida. Well, the people who conquered Florida were actually from Mexico. They were like Criollos. A lot of them were Criollos from Mexico. Criollos and indigenous people like the Tlaxcalans went there too. And so there are codices that no one talks about, okay, where you see the Spanish Criollo soldiers going into war in the, in the Florida or in, you know, in like creating settlements and they're carrying a banner of an eagle on a cactus because they were from central Mexico. These were people that were already born in Mexico. They might have been criollos, but they were already born in Mexico. And so they were already, quote unquote, Mexicanos in the colonial sense. And so um, so it's very fascinating. Like it just kind of like goes under the radar on, on people's minds. And it's and people have done so much to make it seem like 300 years didn't happen. A lot of us, 93% of Mexico is mixed. So 93% of Mexico has some sort of criollo ancestors. They were Spaniards that came, settled in Mexico, had children, and then those children are the criollos. So, let me see. I see a glyph of the eagle with the fire in his mouth. They say that's the original. So, yeah, we'll see that that's that's a that's a very good point. That that glyph that no, the story itself of like the Aztecs founding like Tenochtitlan, that that's way older than the Spanish colonial period. Like that is a real story from like, you know, ancient times or whatever from like 200 years before. But the, but if you notice what you just said right there, you've seen a glyph with the eagle with the fire water out of its mouth. Yeah, you know, there are actually no pre-colonial images of an eagle on a cactus with a snake in its mouth, okay? There are none. We have some from the colonial period because the story is an old story. Like we do have pictures of an eagle with a snake. You could You could find colonial era documents, colonial era paintings, with an eagle on a cactus eating a snake. And it means Mexico City. Th those stories never went away. But we don't have a pre-colonial image of an eagle on a cactus eating a snake. That is a colonial era image. The ones we have, there might have been some that are just lost in history. But we don't have any. So yeah, it's a very fascinating image uh, that we have. you know, And, and it's, we're all very proud of it. And, and it just has like a... a um, an interesting history that a lot of people don't talk about. And this is a just a long journey of what it took to, to get to this point. So yeah, so you have to remember, not all of us are Mexica, right? I mean, that's, that's an identity that, you know, the people of Mexico City descend from those people. And so, yeah, we might be from central Mexico, but, you know, we're not from the original island. And, and that's okay. Like, I mean, that's fine, right? I mean, like, it, the, the, nothing changes anything. We just have to understand, like, we built our nation. We built our nation. This Mexico that goes from the Yucatan all the way to, you know, California, that, what, that took a process of people going out there and building those cities and unifying the country under one culture. And so, 
a lot of people think that like the Aztecs had this stuff before 1521. They didn't. Okay. Like the Aztec dominion was only central Mexico. The only reason why we have something beyond that is because like we went out there and built those cities. Our ancestors did. Yeah. So, so anyway, so yeah, all cities are built. Yeah. But not all cities are built by the same people. Right. So you have to, all cities are built, but did you build them? You know, and it's like, did your ancestors build them? So, so you have to consider, you know, there's a long process of forming a nation. Okay. Like Mexico didn't just land on our laps. Okay. It didn't just like, you know, in 1821, this like thing magically appeared. It took 300 years before 1821 to lead up to 1821. Okay. And that's why those of you who actually do your genealogy, you'll see that you were part of this nation building process, right? You, you see that either your ancestors were mayors or they worked for, because remember, there was no independent Mexican government. There was no independent Mexican government. There, were, there was an island that was called Mexico, but there wasn't an indi independent Mexican government. So if you worked for the government back then, you worked for the Spanish Empire. That's simple as that. Like if you worked for the government in those 300 year, in that 300 year period, you were working for the Spanish Empire. And I know when you do your genealogy, you're starting to see like, oh, wow, I descend from such and such mayor or such and such governor or such and such, you know, so we have such a warped view of history where we think that these people like came from Spain and then went away. And it's like, no, like those are your ancestors and you can find these documents and just learn about the stuff. So that's why I always tell people just, you know, 1821, that's irrelevant for your genealogy, honestly. The, the year 1821 where Mexico became independent, that is an irrelevant date for your genealogy because your family is your family after 1821 and before 1821, okay? So all of that stuff, those are, those are political numbers, okay? 1810, Mexico, um, you know, begins its struggle for independence. 1821, Mexico officially severs ties with Spain. Those are political numbers. Your family is your family after 1821 and before 1821. So think beyond these political narratives, you know? And so you have to uh, approach your ancestry like you would your own grandparents, okay? You want to learn more about them and where they came from, where your last name came from. Nava, are you from Jalisco? I've seen that last name before. <laughs>